What's up people? Today I've got a really quick tutorial for you guys. I'm going to basically show you how to make a uh, 3D animation out of a really simple text pattern that you can make in something like Photoshop or any sort of imaging program. Uh, the program we're going to use to actually do the 3D side is Blender. Um, it's a completely free program so if any of you are completely new to like 3D uh, this, this program is open source and there's so much you can do with it. But anyway, you're going to learn that in a second so on with the tutorial. Okay, so the first thing I want you guys to do, if you haven't already, is just head to blender.org and install this program. It's really fucking awesome. I, I literally, I've only been using it for about four or five months now, and I'm I'm pretty much addicted to it. It's just so fun, and there's so much you can do with it. Plus, the community is really good as well, so if there's anything you want to learn on it, um, I'm sure you can find a tutorial like this one. <laughs> but yeah, just for now, head to blender.org. Just click on this thing here, download Blender, and yeah, just follow the installation process and you can thank me later. So once you've installed Blender, there's one thing I want you guys to do yourselves, and that's just create an image um, using text. So you can use a program like Photoshop or anything like that, or you could just simply put it in a Word document and screenshot it. But for example, this is what I've got. So I'm gonna be using this to basically texture the animation, um, but I'm going to leave it to you guys to create your own text. Or if you want to use this, there'll be a link um, to download this image if you want to play around with that. Right, so once you've got Blender open, we're just going to create a new file. Now delete the default cube, so hit X and delete. And we're going to add a new mesh, so shift A, add a new mesh and add a plane. Now we want to scale this up to 8, so hit S, then 8, and that will scale that to 8. Now we want to just subdivide it. So hit tab to go into edit mode and if you come up to here where it says edge you can hit subdivide and what you're going to see here is it's split into quarters now so if you come to this menu here we are going to change the number of cuts to let's say 40 and that's given us a lot of resolution to work with now when we start adding a bit of displacement anyway so now come to edge and we're going to hit edge split and that's going to create splits where all the edges are um, and it's going to allow us to do some really cool things in a minute. So if you come out of edit mode now, so hit tab again, come to your modifier section here, this little spanner, we're going to add a new modifier. So add a modifier and we're going to add a smooth modifier. And you can see what that's doing now. So if we play with this factor, you can sort of play with that and you get this kind of weird grid effect. We're going to leave it at 0.5 just for now. It's worth noting if you're in edit mode, you won't be able to see that effect. Now we're going to add another modifier and we are going to add a solidify modifier and this is essentially going to extrude it for us so it's going to basically thicken these squares and turn them into cubes so bring the thickness up to about minus 0.3 so the next thing we're going to add is a displace modifier so add a modifier add displace so the hierarchy is really important with the displacement you want to make sure your displace modifier is at the top so if you Come, if you scroll down on your modifiers, um, see this one here with the triangles, just click on the arrow, on the up arrow, and do it again until you see these two triangles at the top. And now we are going to texture this displacement. So add a new texture, come down here to your texture settings, and we're gonna change the texture type to, we'll say clouds. So we're gonna pump the size up all the way to two, and we're gonna bring the depth all the way down and yeah, you get this kind of wavy look, which is really cool. Just gonna delete this light here. So click on the light up here, hit X, delete. Click on your camera, hit Alt-G to reset the location and Alt-R to reset the rotation. Then hit G and then Z and that lets you move it along the Z axis. So if you hit zero, that toggles you in and out of camera mode. So we're gonna hit G then Z while in camera mode to get a good spot. We'll say about here and then you can zoom in just to uh, get a good look. Now, we are gonna animate the displacement of this plane. Hit Shift A, add a new empty, and we're gonna add an empty cube. And we're gonna use this cube to essentially modulate the displacement of this plane. So if you come to your plane again, come back to the modifier section, and on your displacement settings, remember this one with the little triangles, go to texture coordinate, select object, and on object, just assign it to that empty that you just created. And that's going to look 
really awful now. So what we want to do is scale the empty up. So click on the empty, hit S, and just bring that empty up, and just until you tame out this displacement a bit, because it's a bit crazy right now. Or alternatively, you can have a smaller cube, and you can drop the strength down a bit. So you can pop that to, let's say, 0.2. You just basically want to balance this strength parameter with the size of the cube until you get something you like. So the small, the lower the strength, the more subtle the displacement is, and the larger the cube, the more subtle it is as well in a different way. So now that we've set that, we are going to animate it. We are going to bring the timeline up, and I'm just going to change the end frame to 120. We're doing this at 24 frames per second, so setting it at 120 will make this a five second loop. So if you click on your empty, make sure you're at frame one. We are going to animate the y-axis rotation. So add a keyframe, click on that little dot to add a keyframe on frame one. Come to the end of your timeline, move it to one to one so we get a seamless loop and change that to 360 and apply a keyframe. Now if you hit play, you're gonna get a cool wave animation and it loops seamlessly. And again, you can play around with the strength and you can also play around with the scale of that empty. But make sure you're scaling the empty and not the plane. That's important. Great, that's looking awesome. So if you hit Z and then 8, that's going to take you into rendered mode. And we're going to start doing some cool things with this. So first thing is to take off your overlays so we get an accurate representation of how the animation is going to look. Just click on this button here. And you're not going to be able to see your empty now. And you're not going to see any overlays when you click on your plane. So the first thing I'm going to do is change the world settings to black so click here make this black and your screen's going to go entirely black that's because you have no light in the scene um, so you, you essentially can't see anything so we're going to start shading this plane now that we've just created so click on your plane come here to material settings and you want to add a new material and we're going to change the shader this surface we're going to change it to an emission shader and we are going to use the text image that you guys hopefully already created, or you can use my text image, I don't mind. And we're gonna use that to shade the object and make it look like the text is animating. It's gonna look really awesome. So to go a bit more in depth in this, we are going to just come to the top right of this window. You'll see your cursor changes into a little cross. Click on it and bring that in. And you're gonna get two screens now. And on this little drop down here, change this to shader editor now this is a node based editor so just bring this in everything you see here is exactly what you see here but it's just allows you to go a lot more in depth with what you can do so for example if I start changing the color here you're going to see on the right side of my screen it's changing the color there as well so it's the same it's just two different ways of doing things but this way we can go a lot more in depth so if you hit shift a we're going to add a new converter and we're going to add a color ramp and we're going to pop that there plug the color into the color of the emission shader so hit shift a texture add an image texture now plug the color into the color ramp so we're feeding an image into the color ramp which is then going into the emission shader which is then going into our output we want to open an image and you're going to open up either my image or the one that you've created um, so if you go to wherever you've saved it and just hit open image. You can play around with this, this slider here, or you can flip them around to get it the opposite way. I'm gonna do it like that because I want a black background with white text. Obviously it depends on, on how you've colored your image, but yeah, if you're going with my image, then yeah, have the white on this side and the black on that side. Now hit play. Yeah, that's looking cool. But there's more we can do with it. So I am going to animate this modifier. So go to your modifier section. And remember we're playing with that smooth factor. I'm going to animate this, make it look really abstract. So we're going to go from minus 0 0.073. On your first frame, hit I to add a keyframe. Click on your keyframe, hit Shift D, and bring that to 121. So you've got a duplicate keyframe. So make sure that we have the same position on the start and the end, crucial if you want it to loop. Now hit Shift D again and bring that to frame 41, duplicate that and bring that 
to frame 81 and on frame 61 we're going to bring the factor in about there 2.07 now hit I and that's going to add a keyframe there now hit A on your timeline and then T and set the interpolation to Bezier so we get a smooth transition in the animation And obviously we can play around with the empty as well. And also you can play around with the strength again. I'm going to bring the strength down a bit. But yeah guys, just experiment. Like There's no perfect formula, you just got to be creative with it. Now if you want to be a bit more experimental, you can come to your texture properties of your displacement. So go to your plane, go to your texture properties, and you can play around with these types. So you don't have to use the cloud one. You can use like a marble texture, get some really weird effects. Or you could um, you can play around with these types as well and these noise bases. So the Voronoi is quite cool. If you do Voronoi crackle, you can get these kind of weird sort of glitchy effects. If you want to know exactly what's actually happening with this, you can kind of see you can kind of see what the texture does. It's basically reading the black and white data of the image and applying it to the displacement. So you can kind of see that pattern is sort of affecting the mesh of this plane so that's basically what that's, do, that's doing and when you're using the empty you're basically using that as a coordinate you're basically rotating the image um, around so it affects the displacement in that way but I'm gonna just wrap up there so the next thing to do is just to render the animation so what we're gonna do is go to our render settings and we're in Eevee just so you know um, now come down to this output properties um, you want to change this output to somewhere you can find it I'm just going to save it in my tutorial folders change your file format to FFmpeg encoding you want that set to mp4 and on your codec leave it at h264 with your output quality at sexually lossless and then the last thing is just to render the animation come to render hit render animation obviously there's still much more that can be done i'm just showing you the technique so you guys can go off and experiment and make your own like you can see here that i've got i've i've done it in loads of different ways loads of different sort of experimentations of using the same techniques um, i'm going to leave it to you guys just to play around with it and have some fun yeah, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you do feel like you learned something today from this, please leave a like and subscribe. It really helps me grow the channel. And if you want to grab a copy of the project file um, or just the renders I've used, just head to nebmotion.co.uk.